Uh, so, um, and I am broadcasting from Alden Library. My name is Chad Boninger, and I am the business librarian over here in Alden. And y'all are over in Copeland, which is, seems kind of funny because usually when I do things like this, people are on the other side of the planet, not like 100 yards from here. So uh, this is kind of interesting. Um, so, uh, so I want to kind of show you some things as you uh, get to work on your uh, supermarket and grocery store industry analysis, okay? Um, and so I'm going to share my screen with you and show you a few things as we go through that can help you get started with uh, your research, all right? Um, so uh, if you have questions, um, you can basically tell your instructor and they can hit me up via chat. Uh, as we as we go through this process, I'm monitoring chat on the right hand side as well. OK, um, all right. So with that in mind, uh, I am going to share my screen with you. And let me go to. I'm going to start out at the uh, library's homepage. OK, so the library's homepage is Ohio.edu slash library. And if you remember nothing about uh, what I'm going to tell you over the next uh, 40 minutes or so, um, one thing I want to show you here is if you click on the search button, and if you just remember that my name is Chad, you can search for Chad there. All right, and that will pull up my contact info here on the library's website. OK, the reason I'm showing you this is because this is one way to get to uh, all of the business content that I make, not only for Cluster, but for uh, all the various research projects that y'all might do uh, in your in your whole college experience within the College uh, of Business, okay? Um, you can see there's various ways to get in touch with me there. You can make an appointment, email, my telephone, that kind of stuff as well. Uh, what I want to point out here is this link here that says My Subject and Course Guides, okay? So this will take you to my content uh, for business researchers, OK? And I want us to kind of start here because this will kind of take you to a place where that you can use for cluster and beyond, OK? Uh, for cluster purposes, uh, right here, there is a link to the supermarket and grocery stores industry, OK? So this is the guide that I put together specifically for uh, this class assignment, OK? So we're going to kind of walk through a few of the resources that are available here to you uh, and, and um, kind of show you the, the the spectrum of things that are available to you as you get to, get to start with your research, okay? Uh, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I do want to show you that almost on every single page, you'll find various places to get in touch with me, either by email. You can click here to make an appointment up to like two weeks in advance with me, okay? Uh, you can also use the chat button. I've got chat disabled right now because I don't want to be chatting with people while I'm trying to do this this talk. That would be kind of awkward. Um, but that will actually link you to my chat service when I'm when I'm at my desk and available to chat. OK, um, one thing that I would ask of you, I'm trying to make myself as accessible as possible. OK, so there's many ways to get in touch with me. What I ask from you all is as you have research questions, be as thorough and clear in your communication with what you need, OK? So just simply tell me I'm doing cluster research is not really enough to give me a heads up as far as what we might meet about or what your question is really about, OK? We need to go through, you need to give me specifics. Like, I need to know, you know, how many customers uh, in the US prefer Kroger versus Aldi, right? Or something like that. So we need to, get, you know, need specifics when we talk about uh, get, you know, getting help with your research, OK? Not only with communication with me, but you, you want to be thorough in your communication with your faculty as well. OK, all right. So uh, having said that, we're going to start over here uh, with our industry analysis. OK, uh, I should also say we'll use this guide for project two as well. So I'm not going to go into every single uh, in, in every single link on the guide here, but I do want to kind of show some high points that you'll use specifically for uh, for P1 and your annotated bibliography as well. OK. So we're going to start with the industry analysis page, and um, I should I should tell you that I don't put any fluff or junk on my guides. OK, everything that I put on here is intended to be used. OK, I don't put stuff on there just because it's a great database and I want somebody to use it. I put stuff there that's going to be uh, immediately relevant to the projects that you're working on. So everything I have on here is pretty useful to you. OK, uh, we're going to start with Ibis World. And um, what we can do in IBIS World, let's just go in and search for 
uh, let's just search for grocery and you can see it brings up a supermarkets and grocery stores in the US. OK. So Ibis World is a great tool to use if you're looking to understand uh, the grocery store market or any other of about 1100 industries in the US. OK, it's not good for international stuff, but it is pretty good for US. OK, so a sample report here. Um, you get things like an industry at a glance. OK, um, so you can kind of see here's a basic snapshot of what the industry is all about. And then each of these tabs gives you kind of a a pretty good outline as far as like what's the outlook of the industry, for example, uh, lots of text, but also lots of graphs as well. OK, so pretty, pretty good place to look for, um, you know, uh, information. If you don't know anything about an industry, it's a great place to start for for that kind of information. OK, I do want to caution you. Uh, sometimes cluster students in particular tend to really latch on and like to use IBIS World almost exclusively. OK, uh, that's not really a great way to do research, OK, because we don't want all of information coming from just one source. We want to look at other sources that can either complement, OK, or perhaps uh, uh, negate some of the things that are being discussed in other reports, OK, which is one of the reasons we have first research. So first research is the second one we'll look at here, OK? And we will connect here. This one's a little bit awkward in that you have to click once. we got to click twice, and we're going to click over here just to change it up for you. They click on submit here. All right, so it's a little bit goofy to get into. Um, but we're going to go and search for grocery stores. Similar kind of search. All right, so they have grocery stores and supermarkets. They also have specialty food stores. So I'd probably look at look at both reports there. OK, this one, uh, these these reports are a little bit shorter, um, but they are uh, present information in, in some ways very similarly. In other ways, it's a little bit different. And I'll show you what I mean here as soon as it loads for us. OK, so we have things like we've got an industry growth rating over here. Uh, Ibis World may give you a slightly different number as far as how how you know, the, the annual growth rate, OK? Um, there's probably not a right answer between the two of those because they all kind of forecast differently, OK? Uh, so just bear that in mind. Um, so here we've got a forecast for the industry, right? We've got some challenges, just kind of hit some high points in here, all right? Um, we get some critical issues in the industry, uh, things like that. One thing that's unique about uh, first research is these call prep questions. OK, so this gives you um, information about, you know, that you can probably use in your own research when you ask your own questions, right? So these can kind of help you look at you know, developing some questions as you as you as you try to flesh out what's really going on in the industry. So that's it's a pretty good place to kind of look for uh, information or get some get some wheels kind of churning in your head about how to do research for uh, either, either companies in the industry or the industry itself. OK. All right. The next one look at here is Passport. And um, I'm going to go into Passport here. And we're going to scroll down and accept the terms and conditions there. Basically, we're saying we're we're just using this for academic uses use only. Uh, so we're 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 agreeing with the license there. OK, um, all right. Let me close out of this little thing. Go away. Um, I should also say on my guide, I have specific searches that you might want to try uh, within uh, within databases like Passport or Ibis World or, or places like that. OK, so let's go up here and just look at uh, a search and let's say let's do supermarkets. All right, and you can see supermarkets in over here. Uh, this, so already we can say supermarkets in. Right, if we wanted supermarkets in uh, Belgium, right? So here's a report for supermarkets in Belgium. We could also do supermarkets in the US, but we've already got that US data from IBIS World and First Research. So, so uh, Passport is going to be going to be where we want to go for looking at the international markets, right? So, um, so here we have you know headlines and prospects for the supermarkets uh, industry in Belgium or in France or in one of about a hundred other countries. So it's a great place to look for. 
uh, information about um, you know uh, the business uh, in industry in other countries. So this is where you're going to go for global stuff. Okay. Uh, so there's also uh, in addition to supermarkets, you know they use the term hypermarkets. It's not something we use quite often, but so we'll just look at hypermarkets for example in India. But basically you're going to search hypermarkets in insert your country supermarkets in if you want us stuff just do us right um, or traditional grocery retailers in whatever country uh, would be great places to to search for that kind of stuff okay so here's our again our hypermarkets in india report a uh, different kind of way of looking at things there as well okay so so definitely you've got probably three different reports that you will look at in passport that could help you whether you're looking at US stuff or Canada or Mexico or or China or whatever. OK, so a great place to look for for your not only domestic, but global industry information. OK. Uh, let's see. Uh, a perennial favorite is a database called Statista. And Statista is good for uh, statistics and uh, Looks like they've changed the interface since the last time I was in here, so we'll see how this works. Uh, so let's just start typing in grocery, and maybe we want to look at grocery stores. Okay, so here we have uh, frequency of weekly grocery trips to primary stores by online shoppers, US 2019, uh, or maybe US grocery stores ad spend 2010 to 2019. Let's just look at that, okay? So what this gives you is, um, all right, go away. Uh, what this gives you is basic statistics uh, for various aspects of grocery store industry. You could also search for Kroger, for Aldi, for for uh, uh, whatever whatever grocery store you want to to get company specific information. Or if you're looking at um, you know private label, for example, uh, uh, brand information for products in the stores, you could you could search for that kind of stuff as well. Okay. Um, this re report, this chart here can be saved in a variety of ways, including you know, a PNG for your PowerPoint, or you can just save the whole PowerPoint slide, okay? Um, notice there's a citation information here that gives you where to cite it and how to cite it, okay? So that's a good place to look for that information as well. One thing I would encourage you to do, and this won't work for every single thing, but if you click on source, a lot of times it will give you a source link here, okay? And so if we click there, we're going to hope this actually works for us. This takes us into this kind of seemingly random um, PDF report that comes from RAB.com. OK, so what I would do probably is go back in and see where RAB.com is. And see what that well can't go that back that far. Let's go back to RAB.com and see where what that is. OK, so that's the Radio Advertising Bureau. OK, so we just kind of found this PDF through Statista. And we may be able to find other information here on the Radio Advertising Bureau uh, website as well. OK, so Statista is really good for finding these seemingly kind of random PDFs that you probably wouldn't be able to find, you know, on um, on a uh, just via Google search because it's going to be on like the 27th page of a Google search. Right. So they're pretty good at finding you th this kind of data and with a source link to it. To, uh, to, to show you where else you can look for that information. Okay, so a great tool for, for that kind of stuff, okay? All right, I'm gonna close some tabs here and go back to my page. All right, I wanna scroll down and we're gonna look at um, uh, trade publications and industry websites, okay? Um, so probably one of the places that you'll probably definitely wanna use, you know, particularly for your annotated bibliography uh, is uh, Business Source Complete, okay? Uh, so this is a great place to look uh, for articles about the industry, okay? So I might go in and say, let's look for, you know, grocery, I'll just have to type in grocery. So look, here's grocery stores or grocery industry or supermarkets, okay? If we just do a search there, we're gonna get a ton of stuff, you know, way too much. We're not gonna go through 84,000 articles there, but let's maybe, let's look for, um, Let's look for online or uh, uh, web-based or internet, right? Let's do that and limit things down that way, okay? So I'm looking for articles about, you know, online retail in grocery stores, okay? And one thing we can do over here on the left-hand side is a trick I like to do because I still don't want to look through 6,000 articles here, right? 
uh, is I like to limit things to what's called trade publications on the left hand side under source type. OK, and so this will find publications that are written by people in the industry for people in that specific industry. Right. So here we're finding things like convenience store. We're finding stuff like retail merchandiser. Uh, we're finding advertising age. There's a publication called Grocer, right? OK, frozen food age, right? So we're finding some awesome things that I'm sure that you see all the time at, at your uh, favorite bookstore, right? Um, so most of this stuff's going to be available in, in full text in some capacity, whether it's HTML or PDF full text, OK? Um, so you can find articles that way for your for your project and for your annotated bibliography, OK? Um, I do want to show you too, I do link specifically to a, a, a few or a handful of things. So uh, Progressive Grocer, you know, I've got a little bit of information about what this is, but uh, this will link you directly to uh, this publication called Progressive Grocer, okay? And what you can do, if you just want to skim like what's going on in the industry, okay, you can actually click on the full text link here and it'll give you uh, articles uh, from uh, most recent to, to oldest, okay? So you can kind of see you know, that kind of walks you through. So basically it's a way to kind of skim uh, for articles about what's going on in the industry, what's being covered by the industry news, industry press, what are things that are concern, you know, concerning the industry and that kind of stuff. OK, so a, a great tool for uh, for just kind of a skimming the environmental uh, uh, landscape for, for that particular industry. OK. All right. Um, the I've got a handful of industry websites here. I'm not going to go through every single one of these, but these are just some things that I found that I, I, I thought were were pretty reputable uh, via via Google. Uh, mm -hmm. So you'll, you can probably use these and, and others uh, as you as you do uh, your research. OK, so um, so yeah, so I'm hopefully uh, uh, my advice to you would be to go through the sources that I have on my page. Uh, and then uh, you can start turning to Google for to fill in some of the gaps if you if you need information about that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, and if you if you find find you're still having problems, definitely ask me for help. OK, uh, I'm going to transition into the companies and competitors section of uh, my guide here. OK, and I'm actually going to start with uh, 10Ks. OK, so these are. Um, uh, we're going to go in and search for a company, and I'm going to search for, let's just search for Kroger. Okay, so here's the Kroger company, and like any government website, we're going to have to click about a thousand times to get what we want, okay? What I'm looking specifically for in here um, are is the 10K filings, okay? Uh, and what I want to do is I'm going to look at item 1 and 1A, which is the business summary risk factors, and there's also item 7, which is the management discussion analysis. Okay, these are all uh, information from companies that give you a pretty good information about um, uh, how the companies deal with industry trends, industry factors, and that kind of stuff. Okay, so here's the 10K report, and we can click on documents here, and then click one more time. I'm gonna show you an easier way to do this as well, but I just kind of wanna show you the, the official government way of getting access to these things, okay? Because Kroger is a public company, they have to they have to submit files to the Securities and Exchange Commission, and the, the 10K is basically their annual report of their, their numbers and how they're doing business, okay? And there's no way you're gonna be able to read that in the cheap seat, so let me kind of blow this up. Um, here is, uh, uh, so we have, Item, item one is the business. This is what they say their business is, right? And then I'm going to scroll down. Sorry if I make you dizzy. There's usually a link at the top uh, that, that gives you a link here. Then there's uh, what's called risk factors, okay? These are risk and uncertainties that can affect our business. You know, what's the competitive environment is like? Product safety, right? Labor relations. These are all things that impact the industry in some capacity, right? So, so if I was you, I'd probably look at uh, these sections in uh, other public uh, companies like Kroger who are in the grocery store industry to get um, basically uh, information straight from the companies themselves about some of the challenges that they face within the industry. So it's a great place to look for for that kind of stuff. So here's dealing with, you know, data and technology, that kind of stuff, you know, um, legal issues, that kind of thing. OK, so that's one place to look for for that kind of information. 
All right, so now I'm going to go back over and start on the left hand side of my my company tab here. Um, the first one is a database called DMB Hoovers. And um, sometimes this can be a little bit ornery to load. So we'll hopefully this works out OK for us. OK, looks like it's going to it's nice to us today. So we're going to go up here and, and search for Kroger. And I'm going to use Kroger for all my examples here. Uh, you guys can uh, use whatever companies you're looking at here. I usually, um, and we're using these for company purposes in the in the intent to get not only company information, but information about competitors and 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 companies in, within the larger industry, okay? Um, gonna blow this up a little bit, so hopefully y'all can see it. Um, the uh, couple of areas to look at, uh, we've got things like uh, news, what's going on with the company uh, in company news, okay? So this will be news about how the company's you know is is making changes or or partnerships or things like that that they're dealing with with um, looking at the overall industry and market and that kind of stuff. Okay, there is a um, a SWOT analysis. Okay, so this will give you a company's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Okay, so this gives you some information about some of the things that Kroger has that are as far as strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats as they do business within the grocery stores and, and, and supermarkets industry. So uh, a great place to look for, you know, how the company or how an analyst actually looks at a company within that particular industry, okay? So, uh, so you can look at things like that, okay? Um, I should also say, if you look over here, there's this link to SEC filings. This is also where we can find that link to the 10K right there and just go over here and click it as a PDF or Excel or whatever you want uh, for, for that particular report. OK, so maybe a quicker way to get there than the SEC website. Um, so you can see there's all kinds of stuff on the left hand side. That you can use financial health, um, business segments. Here's, you know, comparisons, comparing other companies, uh, things like that. OK. Uh, the next one to look at is a database called Mergent Online. All right, and uh, once again, we'll go in here and we'll search for Kroger on the left hand side and click on the Kroger company over here. All right, let me blow this up a little bit so hopefully you guys can see a little bit better on the screen. Um, and a lot of different ways you can look at this. You can go in and say, let's look at uh, company financials for uh, Kroger, right? And this can all be downloaded via Excel. Uh, you can go in and look at uh, reports. And this is a good place to go in and find an equity report, which is a stock report for Kroger, right? So this is a good place to kind of look uh, look for what analysts are saying about the company and how the company is doing in the face of industry challenges and that kind of stuff, OK? Uh, this is a great place to go in and get news on your company. Uh, you can go over here and get a list of competitors. And uh, so this will give you a list of competitors with uh, various uh, key statistics to look at as far as net income, assets, you know, total number of employees, uh, that kind of stuff, okay? It's also a great place to say, oh, wow, you know, uh, I didn't know about Ingalls, right? So maybe I want to start researching Ingalls or, um, um, you know, some of these other companies, right? So we're, we're kind of, we all kind of know Kroger from being in the Midwest, but, you know, like uh, Publix and Ingalls are primarily, I believe, primarily Southern uh, companies, right? So, uh, so like whenever you go to, you know, Myrtle Beach or someplace like that, there's always a Publix or an Ingalls or, or you know, a, a more local uh, grocery store chain. Okay, so this gives you some some places to look for information about those companies. Okay, um, so I'm gonna close out of that. Um, also, want to show you one more thing down here in the company information, and uh, we'll look at a database called Mergent Intellect. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to go into BizMiner or Simply Analytics for now. We'll probably use that more in, in Project 2. Um, but uh, uh, if, you, if you start using those and you need help later, uh, please please ask. I'll be glad to help you with those as well if you just, you decide to use those. But I think they're outside the scope of what we want to do for uh, today's research session. So we're going to search for Kroger here. We find the Kroger company. And this is another place where we can go in and get a competitors list. Uh, this has a nice little feature here. You can go and see, well, there's a lot of news on this date. Let's go and see what was happening there, right? And it'll, it'll link you to the various news stories about the company, okay, on that particular day uh, in, um, 
in, in on on the web there. OK, so a great place to look for that kind of, you know, what's driving the news, what's what's happening with 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 the company and that sort of thing. Um, you can also see there's a competitors list here. Again, this gives you kind of a, a similar kind of way of looking at uh, other competitors uh, uh, and other other places to research and all these are clickable and take you to the similar kind of information we're seeing here uh, for the Kroger company. Um, this is also a place to get, uh, if we click on industry details here, um, this will actually link us to uh, uh, this um, uh, report from first research. That was like the second database we actually showed you. So th this is how all this stuff kind of runs together. This is this is owned by the same company uh, that owns first research. It's a great way to kind of get another another angle into a similar report there. OK, so it's a good place to look for that. All right. Uh, we'll use uh, Merge and Intellect a lot for project two. And particularly if you wanted to open a grocery store in a particular town, you can go and look and see how many grocery stores there are in that town, their total revenues, uh, that kind of stuff. So it's a, it's a great place to look for local market analysis, which we'll do for project two. And I'll show you how to do that uh, when that time comes. All right, so we're going to go from here uh, to the consumers and customers section, and this will be the last section we cover uh, today, uh, uh, it, it specifically for for what you're looking for for your for your your P1. Okay, um, so what I've showed you thus far is is kind of big company and big industry information. Okay, uh, one resource I think that will be essential. Uh, as you're looking for the consumer side of information for uh, the the grocery store industry, is a database called Mintel. Okay, and Mintel is a market research firm uh, based in the UK. Uh, they actually have an office in um, Chicago as well. And so what they do is they'll actually survey, you know, somewhere between two and five thousand uh, consumers for a particular product or a particular demographic group. Uh, to ask them various questions about um, their buying behaviors and that sort of thing, why they are like a certain brand, uh, that kind of stuff. OK, so for my uh, uh, search suggested searches, I suggest you search food shopping or grocery. Uh, you can kind of search. You can play around with this however you want to. Um, so if we search for grocery, you can see here's a report for online grocery retailing or grocery retailing. And let's see, there was also a report for we search for uh, food. Uh, so here's millennial food shopping decisions, you know, so we've got stuff like that. So I'm going to stick my, my grocery for right now. Um, and let's look at uh, online grocery retail in US June 2019. All right, so it's almost like they just published this report just for y'all for this project. It's a pretty good report to look at here. And I'm going to make this a little bit larger so you can see it in the back of the room. Um, so, uh, so what you can find in here is, uh, I'm going to scroll down here. Um, so you get like things like what's the size of the market, what you need to know, market factors for the, for the, uh, for the overall industry, that kind of stuff. And then we have stuff about the consumer, right? So, uh, you know, here's stuff on reasons for shopping online or attitudes towards grocery, online grocery shopping, things like that. So let's look at that and see. Um, what we have here. Uh, so we have information about, um, you know, basically they ask survey information. How much do you agree with or disagree with the following statements about grocery shopping? Uh, I like online sites. I, I am concerned about the freshest of food products purchased online, right? I prefer home delivery to store pickup, right? So these are all kind of various categories. And then if we look at it, they'll start breaking it down into uh, demographic areas as well. Okay, so there's different things you can look at to basically understand what what um, what consumers want in their grocery experience. In this case, the online grocery experience, uh, things like that. Okay, so here we have um, you know basically what you need to know about the consumer uh, information. You know that kind of gives you a broad um, uh, perspective on on what people are doing in the industry. Okay. Um, while I'm in here, I do want to show you um, there's this thing that's called this interactive data book. OK, and I'm going to kind of go and say, let's look at uh, uh, interest in future online grocery shopping as an example. I'm going to click there and click go to data book and I'm just going to continue without logging in. We're already logged in, so we don't need to click on that. Um, 
and we're going to wait a second. This takes a, a, a couple seconds to load up here. Uh, this is going to, you can just close out of this. This is going to pop up for every single screen, which is kind of annoying, but it, it happens. Okay. Um, so here is the data uh, that was from, and there's, I can't, I don't know if I can blow it up anymore or not. Yeah, there we go. Um, you, uh, so this is the data that's straight out of the report from all the questions that they asked. So basically they asked 1400 internet users who do their grocery shopping in store versus, in store versus online, um, that sort of thing. Okay, so we can go in and say, uh, let's click on explore demographics. And this is kind of neat. Um, again, we don't want to tour because we know what we're doing. Um, so right now we're looking at demographics here and you can go in and change this, right? So maybe you want to say, let's look at uh, family structure. Okay, so we do that. And now we can see if you, you know, parents who uh, uh, like to, you know, have interest in shopping online or that sort of thing. So you can kind of go in and look at and get information about that, that, informa that information. You can graph it, right? Okay, and then you can download the table to put in your PowerPoint or whatever. Okay, same thing over here. If you wanted to, you can look at as a graph or as a table, either way, um, different ways to kind of look at that sort of that data there. Okay, so different things you can look at with that information. Okay. All right, let's see. Let me go back to my guide here. Uh, again, lots of different things you can look at in um, Intel. Um, if you think, well, you know what? Um, you know, really the problem is that Kroger needs to market more to millennials, right? And I know how to market to millennials because my brother's millennial, right? Um, you know, there's not really, you can't really do that without actually backing up with data, but there's all kinds of stuff in here for marketing to specific people in Mintel, okay? So here we have reports for marketing to baby boomers, right? Marketing to millennials, black millennials, Gen Z, right? Um, uh, moms, that kind of stuff. So, uh, so maybe uh, your, you know, one of your recommendations for some of these companies is that, you know, maybe down the road they need to market more to moms, you know, uh, to to for the online grocery delivery and that kind of stuff. Okay, I can personally attest that that my wife and I use the Kroger Click List quite frequently during basketball and baseball season because we're always in the bleachers or on the side of the field or in my my case, you know, coaching a, a team, uh, and so we don't have time to go to the grocery store, so we did the Click List. You know when we're you know between innings or whatever right so great play to to to, to do that kind of stuff okay all right um a couple more things i'll show you and then i'll turn it back over to your faculty um citing your sources um in in business databases are pretty challenging to cite um and my advice to you is just to be as consistent as possible, okay? Um, I link to a friend of mine, a great librarian down at UNC Greensboro, Steve Kramer. He's got a, a guide to how to cite uh, business databases in APA format, okay? Uh, this does not have every single database that we subscribe to, right? It's got, and it's got others that we don't subscribe to, but you'll kind of notice a pattern in how things are done, okay? So it's a great way to look at um, how to cite things in, in various ways, uh, just to kind of be consistent. Basically, you want to know, you know, who wrote it, when they wrote it, what's the title, and where can I get it, right? Where can I find it, right? So that's uh, that's where this is a good guide to kind of give you some information about that. Okay. Uh, finally, uh, one more time and wrapping up, uh, various ways to get help with, from me, right? So if I'm not around, I've got other help options down here. I've got some video tutorials, some FAQs, uh, things like that. So, uh, so these are all ways to kind of get help uh, from me, right? So, um, so you're like, oh, Chad, show me how to find a SWOT analysis. Where do I go for that? So we've got basically, uh, here's some places to find SWOT analyses uh, for whatever, right? So different ways to kind of help you with, with finding information for, uh, for your topic, whether it's this project or one down the road, okay? All right, with that, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen there. And uh, I wanna pause for a second to see if there's, are any questions from the classroom. If, if there are from my three colleagues, just type them in the chat box over there.
One thing I failed to mention is that um, uh, everything I showed you today needs to be accessed through my guide or through the library website, okay? If you just go to like mintel.com, it's not gonna know you're an Ohio University student, right? So it's not gonna know that we have access, that we pay for a subscription. So it's gonna ask you to get out your credit card and pay $5,000 for a report, right? Don't do that, right? Go through my guide and whether you're on campus or off campus, it's gonna ask you to log in with your Ohio ID and your password, and then it's gonna push you more, push you into uh, the subscription that we've paid for. So just, that's just something to think about, okay? All right, seeing no questions. I hope this was worthwhile. Uh, I hope this was useful. Um, I, um, Lori's asking, where will this video be posted in Basecamp or on your site somewhere? I tell you what, I will uh, download the MP4 here in a second and throw it up on YouTube and then send y'all a link as well to that, okay? So, so we, can, we can do that, okay? All right, I am going to stop recording now and wish you all the best and have a great day. And once again, if you have questions, let me know. So talk to you soon.